following presentation is from St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Oakland, Maryland. Good morning, Saints of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Good morning. Good morning. Happy All Saints Sunday as we have come together to rejoice in what we call the communion of the saints. You know, you say we're Methodists. We don't believe in, in uh, praying to the saints or anything like that. But we do believe in the very biblical doctrine that we are part of something larger than us. That it's not just about us as the body of Christ here at St. Paul's, and it's not just about the church on earth, but there is also the great cloud of witnesses that is in heaven. And today we celebrate our connection, that we are both the church triumphant, the church that has already overcome, but also the church that is waiting for that promise, the church militant. And so we celebrate that connection today. And on this All Saints Sunday, we are privileged today to have the message come from Melissa. Nice catch. I'm not used to this. you got to bear with me. All right. Good morning. It's good to see you all here this morning. Um, I may have begged Matt to let me preach on All Saints Sunday um, because this is one of my favorite Sundays out of the entire year. Um, I, love the, um, I love that we get to join with the great crowd of witnesses that is surrounding God's throne in worship and praise, um, and we get to join our voices and our praise with theirs today. Um, so let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day that we get to join with the church triumphant in declaring your praise and in worshiping you. Lord, and I just pray that um, you would minister to our hearts today and that you would um, strengthen and encourage us as we continue on this journey of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. So I have a confession to make. This may be a little shocking to some of you, so I need you to prepare yourselves. I am a grammar nerd. Yes, that's right. I love the Oxford comma. The semicolon is my favorite punctuation mark. And sentence diagramming was one of the highlights of my high school career. <laughs> so when I was studying today's scripture, my heart rate went up just a little bit because today's passage begins with the word therefore. Therefore is an adverb, which means its job in a sentence is to provide a greater description to a verb, adjective, another adverb, a phrase, clause, or a sentence. The definition of therefore is for that reason or consequently. Synonyms are as a result, hence, thus, that being the case, and on that account. I know, I know, you guys need to keep it down a little bit. This is stimulating stuff. <laughs> but you know what's really exciting about therefore? Since the sentence starts with therefore, we have to look back in order to know what the passage means. Because therefore means for that reason or consequently, we need to know what happened before we got to that point. So let's jump back a minute. Hebrews 11, 1 through 7 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the wor worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning, and built an ark to save his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. Hebrews 11 continues on like a hall of fame of faith. By faith Abraham, by faith Isaac, by faith Jacob, by faith Moses, by faith Rahab. It then continues in verses 32 through 40. 
And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received their dead by resurrection, others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. This great list of saints, whom we know had great faith because they are commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Abraham died in Egypt. Joseph died in Egypt. Moses died without making it to the promised land. The judges, the prophets, the kings, the martyrs, while they were all commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised because God has something better in mind. What is this something better? Hebrews 1 tells us that he is better than the angels. Hebrews 3 tells us that he is better than the law. That something better God had in mind for his saints is Jesus. The saints of Hebrews 11 did not receive that which was promised because God had something better in mind through Jesus' coming, but they also did not receive the fulfillment because they need us. They are not made perfect, complete, full, apart from us. Their finish of the race is not complete apart from us. This race is both a marathon that we run through our whole lives, but it is also a relay, with the heritage of faith being passed down to us through the generations of saints that we might all receive the fulfillment of the promise together. Therefore, in light of this, for this reason, Consequently, that being the case, on account of this, because we are surrounded by these saints who are examples of the faith, who have not received the promise apart from us, because while they have gone before us, they have not yet received the fulfillment of what was promised apart from us, we are called to cast aside everything that hinders us and run with endurance and perseverance the race that is marked out before us. Their lives are an example because while they were imperfect, they fixed their eyes on God and continued after him. They made mistakes. David committed adultery and had his lover's husband murdered. They failed. Samson and Gideon and Barak all failed in the fulfillment of their role as judges over Israel. They had doubts. Abraham had a child with Hagar, rather than believing that God's promise will be fulfilled through his wife, Sarah. They were disobedient. Moses was denied entry to the promised land because he disobeyed God's command. But all of these saints continued on in faith, fixing their eyes on an unseen God, believing in his promises, assured in what they hoped for, and convicted by what they could not see. They continued on in the race, believing that the fulfillment of the promise would come. They continued on because God is faithful to make us faithful to him. And as Anne said in the children's moment, we all have our own Hall of Fame of Saints, don't we? For time would fail me to tell of my grandpa, Lyle Sylvester, who had a revival of his faith in his 70s and memorized Bible verses while driving a combine in his 80s because he didn't want any of the young men in his men's group to get ahead of him in faith. Of my grandma, Lois Jean Sylvester, who made the most of every day she lived, living full out with an unflappable sense of humor and a heart full of love even as cancer ate away at her body. Of my grandpa, Phil Hill, 
who loved to practice hospitality and constantly had an open door for anyone who needed a place to stay. Of Herbert Layton, who cared deeply for his patients to the point of giving his own blood to them when they needed it. Of Rob Browning, who followed God and made everyone his family. Of Daniel Paul, who never ceased lifting his hands and voice to praise God to the very end of his life on this earth. We all have our own Hall of Fame of Saints, whose lives inspire us and who are now surrounding the throne of God. And even these have not yet received that which was promised, because they're waiting for us. This crowd of witnesses surrounds us, inspires us, encourages us to lay aside everything holding us back, everything that might weigh us down, and run with perseverance as they did, fixing our eyes on the one who is unseen, but who has run this race as well. Because Jesus didn't just sit on a throne, he came down, he ran the race. He was so overwhelmed with the joy that was set before him, the joy of fulfilling the promise, the joy of being our completion, the joy of finishing the race and being our something better, that he endured the cross, despising its shame, and now he wears a victor's crown. He crossed the finish line, and he is seated at God's right hand, where we are encouraged to fix our gaze. They looked to him. That's where the saints looked to him. They fixed their gaze on him. And he is unseen, but they see him now. Their examples encourage us to do the same. We need to cast aside everything else and fix our eyes on Jesus, even though we do not yet see him. And we need to run to him. We remember the saints because their lives and examples of faith are there to remind us when the race gets difficult, when we feel like stopping, when we don't think we can go another step, when our doubts are strong, and our faith is weak, that we need to keep running. We look back through this relay of faith from Abel to Enoch to Noah to Abraham to Sarah to Isaac to Jacob to Joseph to Moses to Rahab to Gideon to Barak to Samson to Samuel to David and on through the generations of our faith ancestors who are passing this legacy of faith on to us and whose example spurs us onward in the race. This great crowd of witnesses surrounds us, and they are cheering for us to continue on in the faith so that we might all be made perfect and complete together, so that we might all finish the race. Nine years ago, on November 1st, All Saints Sunday, I finished my very first full marathon. My dad and I were running together, but around mile 13, I was slowing down. I'm really not a fast runner. <laughs> So I told him to go ahead. I ran the second half of the marathon mostly by myself. And I started to cry when I came around a corner and saw a banner that said, 26 miles down, 0.2 to go. And then I saw the finish line ahead of me. And I started to sprint to the end. Halfway down that last stretch to the finish line, there was my dad with his finisher's medal around his neck and my sister who had come to cheer for me. And they sprinted with me through the finish line. In that moment, I first had a glimpse of the meaning of this passage. My dad had gone before, but he was there waiting for me at the finish line, cheering me on to finish the race because this race would not be completed until I crossed the finish line too. We are not the first to run this race. We will not be the first to finish this race. We are the next and a great lineage of faith. We are being called to take up our place in the race, to become the next generation of this legacy of faith. We are called to run with endurance, fixing our eyes on the fulfillment of the promise, Jesus, and being spurred on by the cheers of this great crowd of witnesses surrounding us who are not made perfect apart from us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by Abel and Enoch and Abraham and Sarah and Lyle and Lois Jean and Phil and Herb and Rob and Daniel, let us throw aside everything holding us back 
and run with endurance toward the finish line as we fix our eyes on Jesus, the great reward of our faith, that we might all be made perfect and complete together. Amen. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for this day where we get to celebrate and worship you. Lord, we thank you for all of the saints who have gone before us and whose lives inspire us to continue fixing our eyes upon you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We read the story of honor and glory and praise the name of Christ. The preceding presentation came from St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Oakland, Maryland.